I was careful, all right. Three heaping spoons instead of two to hide the bitterness. A double measure of black tea, carefully, very carefully over the white pottery stuff in the strainer. And it was hidden completely. I left the tea kettle whistling on the electric plate. Ready for mother. I didn't see Mother again. I left the apartment half running all the way downtown to the studio in the rain. Erwin was crabbing as soon as I walked in. Oh, good morning, Duchess. All right, hop into your sunsuit now and make it snappy. And make up for black and white. What's the excuse today? Have to go to a funeral or something? I did it, he, I did it, did it, he said, silently, and got through a series of poses. My mind had gone blank, and I, I struggled to keep that way. Numb. All I knew was I mustn't let, mustn't let myself remember. Keep busy and blank. And that's the way it was when you came in and asked me questions. You spun that ugly little tea strainer till my eyes ached watching it. And you tore the protective blanket from over my head. You released my memories, but I told you nothing of the scenes you conjured up in my mind. I told you nothing. But still you knew that I lied when I agreed that my mother must have killed herself. You're not telling the truth, miss. But the odd thing is you're closer to the truth than you realize. I didn't kill my mother. I didn't. Did you know your mother had enough lethal medicine under her pillow to kill a dozen people? What? She'd been hoarding them. Perhaps because she brooded, she was a burden. No. But, miss, your mother never would have taken those capsules the hard way and a cup of tea. There was the flaw in your lie, wasn't it now? What? Your friend Ted Wark got a hold of your mother's prescription. Maybe he took it from your purse. That doesn't matter. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm afraid I must place you under arrest, Miss Dunn. But I didn't kill my mother. You said... You said... No, no, you didn't kill your mother, miss. Your mother had a caller this morning after you left. He brought her flowers and some more medicine. Oh, no. Not Ted. He couldn't have done. No. No, you lied. So your mother never had a chance to use the overdose she had hidden. No. You, you lie. And your mother's caller never had the chance to feed her the poison he brought with him either. Because as soon as he arrived, he made the mistake of accepting your mother's hospitality. He drank a special cup of tea. Half of it, anyhow. Enough. Your mother is still alive, miss. I'm arresting you for the murder of Ted Wark. Betty Grable for a wonderful performance. Here again is our star, Miss Betty Grable. I want to thank Tony Leader and his wonderful cast of actors for helping me to make my first suspense visit so pleasant. I'm a suspense fan from way back, and I'm sure all of you are as anxious as I am to hear next week's show when Mickey Rooney appears in the Cornell Woolrich story, The Lie. It's another truly gripping study in... Suspense! Betty Grable appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Film Corporation and will soon be seen in the Technicolor picture, The Beautiful Blonde from Bashful Bend. Tonight's suspense play was written by John T. Copeland, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leder. <laughs>